ambitious changes to the tax code, but which plan makes the most sense and which one is uh, best for the nation's uh, fiscal future? Grover Norquist joins us now. He's the founder and president of Americans for Tax Reform. Super Grover, good morning. Hi, good to be with you. Um, we've seen each, not each, but many of the, yeah. the guys that will be on the, the stage tomorrow night, either the undercard or the, the other one. We've seen tax plans. Is there one that's your favorite right now that, that holds m most closely to, to, the, to your principles? Not really. The, the, the interesting news that most people have missed is how similar they are. They all take the corporate income tax down dramatically because we're at 35 percent, European average is 25, China's at 25, and they bring it down. Trump takes it down to 15, others take it down to zero, uh, but they all realize you've got to take that down. The personal rates come down, they move, all move towards a single rate tax, they all want to make savings uh, tax-free like expandable IRAs, the alternative minimum tax goes away full business expensing, and no death tax. So while there are differences between them, the, the key issue is all the Republicans are exactly on the same page, which is not where we were in 1980 when uh, George Herbert Walker Bush referred to lower marginal tax rates as voodoo economics. You have a unified Republican vision, and the Democrats have been fairly clear about the direction of their tax policy, but not been specific about which tax, how they're going to raise tax, yeah. they're going to be tax yeah. increases. Yeah, it's up. That's the direction, yeah. uh, unequivocally up. up. And yeah. the, the collective progressive left hates every one of these plans. Uh, today, it's, uh, it's yeah. the Rubio is the uh, poster child du jour on Huffington Post, uh, entitled with, with the, uh, the calm and the, the non-hyperbolic uh, uh, language of the Huffington Post every day, mm -hmm. the tax cut that would destroy the budget. Uh, more than three times larger than Bush's, 34% would go to the top 1%. So I've seen that they kind of go from one tax plan to the next for, for which one is going to be uh, the most, uh, the cruelest, and the, the, the one that, the, that gives the biggest tax cuts to the rich people. What, what our friends on the left do is they go from Monday until Wednesday explaining that our present tax system is not progressive at all. Then on Thursday and Friday, they explained that if you cut across the board, the rich people would get all the money because they're paying all the taxes now. And you really can't connect those two. We have a very progressive tax structure, much more progressive than some of the European structures uh, because they have the VAT that right. hits everybody. The most progressive in the world. Yes. And to move it down and cut everybody's taxes the same percentage ends up, you know, more for somebody else. The most important thing on tax policy, though, is to get to reduce those taxes that damage economic growth. If we had grown from the bottom of Ob the recession that ended six months into Obama's presidency and grown at the same rates we did from Reagan's bottom of the recession that he, that he had, uh, there would be 12 million more Americans at work today had we taken Reagan's route of lower taxes, stable money, less regulation. There are 12 million Americans. 12 million families damaged by not learning the lessons from the 1980s, which the rest of the world learned, which is why they have corporate income taxes below ours. Well, I think both sides say liars figure and figures lie or whatever it is because, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's the, that's the beauty of, of economics. You can give the Nobel Prize to, uh, to, to Stiglitz and then you can give it to Milton Friedman. You give it to Krugman and then you give it to... You know, someone uh, that, that has, and I won't say exact opposite because opposite's enough, right. but opposite, of totally opposing viewpoints. So now the two sides have, have now said that the zombie economic policies of trickle-down obviously didn't work, and uh, voodoo economics would be a, a nice term for what they call the notion okay. that tax cuts can actually generate some type of dynamic uh, revenue um, at that point. They, they just say that that's been proven absolutely wrong, just like it's been proven absolutely wrong that higher minimum wages ever hurt employment. They've said that that's settled, too. So both sides say these things are settled, and they say, they say opposite things. The advantage now for those of us who'd like to see lower taxes and less regulation, more limited government, is that there are somewhere between 50 and 57 states, depending on who you believe. Right. And among those states, there is there are 24 where the Republicans have the governorship in both houses, and they're doing interesting things 
unlimited government. And there are seven states, California and six others, that are run by Democrats. And they can do anything they want in Vermont. So let's look at that. And why do the, the seven blue states not take the minimum wage up to $50,000 a year if it has no effect? Why not increase the income tax in those states? In point of fact, people are leaving those states that have high income taxes and moving to the nine states that have no income taxes. Right. So Trump has not signed on, right? But he, but he says that he would not allow an increase in the, in the net amount. So do you take that as, as, would you say that he is part of the, uh, the pledge or not? He has not yet taken the pledge. It's my understanding that, that he will. Um, <laughs> and then Jeb, what did, what, during the debate, did he say, when was he, he wanted to give someone a warm kiss? I, I don't know if that, is it a wet kiss or a warm kiss? Do you know? What do you, what's your term? I'm not sure. Jeb Bush, in the middle of the debate in 12, when we were trying to stop a tax increase by Obama, he announced, uninvited, I don't know what he was doing as former governor, oh, I'd raise taxes as part of a budget deal. Thank you very much. The Republicans in the House and the Senate were united that that was never, ever going to happen. And this Budinsky comes in and kicks him in the back of the shins. Um, Bush didn't get his way. The Republicans held. We didn't raise taxes. We got the sequester and the spending limits, which was very important. Now, since then, when Bush said he would raise taxes as part of a budget deal, like his dad did and gave us the recession and eight years of the Clintons, thank you very much, um, he has now said he would not do that. But he has not been willing to put it in writing. And studies show that politicians very easily will tell you they won't raise your taxes, and what they verbally say has no impact at all on what they actually do. You but if they sign it and make it in writing, the pledge, to the American people, the chances of the raising taxes are very, very small. I we haven't had a... I think, Grover, it was, the, it was a question about if you could get 10 revenue cut and, and one tax increase, right. would, you, would you do it? And yep. that's, that's sort of a, that's, that's the question that, that, um, that, that gets phrased on the left to, to show the unreasonableness of, of people that have signed your pledge. That's how, they, that's the, how they make you look, they try to make you look silly. Except, as they know, that there's no Democratic offer for 10 to 1. There's no Democratic offer for 3 to 1, 2 to 1. What Obama wanted in 2000 was more tax increases uh, and, more, and more spending. No spending cuts at all just higher taxes to pay for additional spending. So they offer, how about 10 to 1? That's their request to see if you'll walk down the alley with them. And if you walk down the darkened alley with them, you don't come out with anything. This is just a question. Are you stupid enough to engage in a negotiation that you know you will be lied to and taken advantage of? They cheated Reagan in 83. Remember, 3 to 1 promised. They cheated Bush Sr. 2 to 1 promised. The, the offer of why don't we have some tax increases and some spending cuts is really an offer. Let's focus on tax increases and spending cuts evaporate during those negotiations. Only when you say tax increases are off the table completely do we make progress as we did in 2011 and won a 10-year cap on uh, spending. Have you read this Arthur Brooks? Have you read The Conservative Heart yet, Grover? Arthur Brooks is both brilliant and his work should be read by all conservatives. I know. It's just that you, they use you as a poster child for the kind of conservatives that he, say, that he says that we need to, or the conservatives need to have a way of, of where, where when you associate compassionate with conservative, it's not like people don't go, wow, I never thought of that. It should be in, ingrained in the notion of being a conservative. Since it, it you know, it, it is the, the system that, that raises the, the most people out of poverty, usually. Letting people run their own lives, their economic their lives, their success. personal lives, their faith lives, is treating them with respect. Right. And anything else shows contempt right. for people. But it, it makes, you know, that it, unfortunately the left has been winning that argument because it makes, they, they can use the hard-hearted argument, the, oh, you're a Darwinian, you know, you want to leave people, you know, out in the streets. Yeah. It's got to be a different way because it's not working the other way. Anyway, um, 
I paid Andrew to read one of Arthur's books, and then you know I, I made the mistake of offering him a dollar a page, and then he the, the like appendix was like forty True. pages long. The appendix was forty <laughs> and pages I, long. And I took payment for the entire he did. thing. He did. And I, I read.